Hi everyone, Phil from tech for Techs here. Is your CPU running a little bit too hot or you're finding it's a bit too noisy with that stock cooler on or even both, then this product may be the product you're looking for. It's from Be Quiet, it's the Silent Loop Tube. We've got the 240 millimeter version. There are other versions available as well. It's got a recommended retail price of just under 120 UK pounds and we've got links in the description below. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the box and a bit of information about this. This is the 240 millimeter version. They do four versions, a 360 millimeter, 280 millimeter, the 240, which we have here, and a 120. The ideal applications for this, it, according to them, is overclocked CPUs, high resolution gaming PCs and workstations. And it's, the highlights are, a dampened six pole pump with three chamber designed. You've got Silent Wings 3 PWM high speed fans, and you've got ARGB illumination with multiple colours and options. So, pretty straightforward for a high end cooler. The one thing I do note is the Silent Wings fans, they are very quiet fans, good performance, and quiet. So, that's pretty good. And this is classed as what they class as a premium product, so it's one of their top end products. Obviously, it's made by Be Quiet. You've got a picture of it here. You can see the water block or the CPU block here. It looks like it's got LED illumination around the edge there. And then you've got those two fans on the actual radiator there. So that's pretty straightforward. Let's have a look at the rest of the box. It says what it is on the side. The back, it shows you a bit of information. So it tells you about the silent loop two there. It tells you about the copper nickel base there and then reservoir and the fans and so forth. But we'll look a bit closer into that in a few seconds. On here, you've got your specifications. So it tells you the full dimensions, what it fits on, which is basically pretty much most modern CPUs uh, on the market, as well as your nest, uh, sorry, as well as your decibel levels and other things. It tells you things that the Pump speed is 2,800 RPM, as well as the fans going at 2,200 RPM. The lifespan is saying on the fans is 300,000 hours, so it should last you long enough. So let's open this up and figure out exactly what we've got inside. Okay, so inside the box, you've got a few bits and bobs. Let's start off with the paperwork first. You've got a disposal form here saying safely dispose of your stuff and so forth. No one's going to read that. You've also got a manual here which tells you how to fit it. There are a few QR codes in there for the different sizes. Tells you the contents of the pack, how to fit it. So it looks pretty straightforward. You put the, uh, the base on the top. Obviously that's for AMD. It tells you how to put the fans, put the paste on, screw it in and so forth. It's pretty straightforward for a, a water cooler fitting wise by the looks of it. it. Tells you how to put the fans on. It tells you how to connect up the RGB controller. It also tells you there is a little hole on the side where you can turn the RGB on and off which is alright I suppose. Um, I'm hoping you don't have to open up the case every time if you want to turn it on and off, it would be a bit of a pain. And then it's got a refilling hole on the side as well as coming with liquid to re refill the, sea, uh, the actual water cooler up after a couple of years and then it gives you a bit of technical stuff. And there's that little reset for the RGB there. Right, so let's get on to this. So let's start off with the liquid. So you've got your Be Quiet Silent Loop 2 coolant. So anti-freezing to minus seven. So you've got that, that's to refill this up. You refill it from this end, there's a little screw hole there, you unscrew that and you pull that in and go squirt, squirt, squirt. Generally you should only have to do that after a couple of years and then again you may not need to. So you're just basically refilling it or for whatever reason you need to drain it out and put some different coolant in. You can do that easily with this. It's not a sealed, sealed, Unit. We'll look a bit more at the cooler in a few seconds, but that gives you a rough idea of the coolant. You've got two 
of their Be Quiet Silent Wing free fans, which run up to 2,200 RPM. These are pretty good fans, to be honest. We've used them on other coolers and stuff like that from Be Quiet, and they're pretty good, and they even got a variation of them inside the new power supplies we reviewed a few weeks ago. Uh, so it gives you a rough idea, and that was the Dark Power 12. And as you can see, the fans itself, they've got like ridges on each of the blades to help shift more air. And it does it pretty quietly as well, saying that. Obviously, if you're going to run them full whack, they're going to make a bit more noise than if you just leave them on auto or low. You've got two bags with bits in. So this is going to be your backing plates. You've got your thermal paste there as well. And all the screws to fit the actual cooler to your motherboard there. And then this has got your RGB cable in and a few screws in there as well. So, and a fan splitter to combine the two fans together on one cable. So again, that's all in that bag there. Let's get down to the cooler itself. As we said on the actual radiator, you do have a screw hole here. That's where you would unscrew that, squirt your liquid in to fill it back up. Again, you only have to do that after two years and I would recommend you take this out of your case before you do that because the last thing you want to do is squirt this accidentally all over the rest of your components. And one thing what I would suggest whenever filling a radiator and that goes for cars as well is do it when they're cold, not when they're hot because as well as the heart, the heat it makes the liquid expand and you open it up and it'll potentially spray everywhere. So do it when it's cold, please. Especially when you're doing it in a car, otherwise you end up with a, a basically a fountain coming out the bonnet of your car. But there we go. So you can screw the fans on either side, depending on how you're going to fit it to your PC and so forth. That's totally up to you. You've got these nice sort of like braided tubes. So rather than having like just rubber, it's sort of like got a braided effect to them. They are quite rigid. They don't bend much, but generally that's usually the case on most water coolers. You've got two cables coming off of it. One is a free pin connector for your motherboard. You can plug that into your motherboard socket where you would normally connect your CPU fan. And it does let you change the performance of that or the speed of the pump by changing between 9 and 12 volts on obviously your motherboard um, settings and so forth. You have the cables for your RGB. So you've got your standard ARGB connection there which is your 5 volt and then you've got also another pass-through cable there as well. So you could add another device onto it if needs be or put it in the middle of a chain or however you want to do it. You can also connect it up obviously to the controller which is here as well if you don't have an RGB connection on your motherboard which is pretty good. So let's go to the water block itself. So you do have obviously the base and the bottom there. And as you can see, it's quite nice and shiny. Well, that's for sure. I don't really see any marks or anything on there. They've done a pretty good job. It does feel, yeah, it feels nice and smooth, no rivets, a little bit of dirt from the sticker there. But other than that, that's pretty nice. The cables obviously do rotate on the block there as well to position it how you want and then the block itself you can see there I'm guessing this bit comes off yes it does there we go so as you can see it says be quiet there and then you've got your RGB lighting around the edge there as well and I'm guessing the be quiet bit lights up and excuse me about this little fly which has come from god knows where uh, okay, so it gives you a rough idea, so, but otherwise that's pretty much it. We're going to plug it in, get it testing, and see how well it actually performs, and take a few pictures so you know what it looks like once it's been set up. Okay, down to testing. In basics, all testing is done on the same machine, with the same version of Windows, with the same version of programs. We disable internet access, so no programs, updates or anything can be installed or updates what can affect any of the results. All background tasks which are non-essential get disabled, so again, they will not affect the testing. The testing room has air conditioning slash heaters built in to keep the temperature at 18.5 degrees Celsius. Also, decibel levels are at a steady 45.6 decibels. 
When testing things like fans, we set the speeds at 50% and 100% and not auto, because obviously if you've got something set at auto, it will adjust the fan speed up and down to adjust the temperature to the optimal temperature, so it can affect results. So we set the fan speeds at set uh, speeds like 50% and 100%. All testing is done on a 10700K i7 processor, 16 gig of RAM, as well as a FiCuda SSD and the same motherboard and all the other components are the same for every single test. Full specifications are in the description. Okay, so down to the test results. Running at 50% fan speed, while the machine was doing nothing, so 0% load, the temperature was 23 degrees, and that's after 30 minutes of testing. With the fan running at 50% and the machine running at full load, again, after 30 minutes, the average temperature was 59 degrees. With the fan running at 100% and the machine running at flat out at 100%, we got 55 degrees Celsius. When we overclock the machine to 5.1 gigahertz and the machine running at 100%, with the fan running at 100%, the machine came in at 70 degrees Celsius. You may be asking, but how does this perform compared to other water coolers? Well, actually it performs pretty good. A review we did a few weeks ago of the NZXT Kraken Z53, which is over a 200 pounds cooler, which is nearly double the price of this one, it's only 3 degrees to maybe 4 degrees difference at the most. And I say that's very little difference for that huge price increase. Okay, the Kraken did have a digital display on it, so it was a little bit more feature rich. But in all honesty, performance wise, there's very little between them. And would you actually notice it when you're using it or gaming or anything like that? No, you wouldn't. The decibel levels were probably slightly higher than the Kraken. We got a 48.1 decibel rating at 50% fan speed and 60.1 out of 100, which is probably a couple of decibels louder than the NZXT Kraken. But saying that, would you notice a difference in reality? Is probably not. And when the fan is running at 50% speed, which it's going to be, most of the time, or even slower than that, you can't actually hear it over the rest of your case fans and stuff like that, or it'd be very unlikely you would unless you've got some unique setup. So in conclusion, would we recommend this? Well, the answer is basically yes. While it's not the quietest cooler on the market, it's definitely not the loudest, that's for sure. While it's not the best performing, it's definitely not the worst. For its price range though, it is actually pretty good. And bear in mind, you could go out and buy a bigger water cooler, say the 360ml version, which would still work out a lot cheaper than the 240ml version of the NZXT Kraken. So it gives you a rough idea. There is a big price difference between what you class as a really high performer and something like this, when the actual differences in temperature are very little. The RGB on it is pretty nice. It's not over the top. It's just a little bit there, and it can make your machine just give it a little bit of life. But if you're wanting to go way out there, it's probably not the exact cooler you want to go for. But saying that, I think it's quite nice for what it is.